Picture this. You're standing inside one of the world's busiest airports. 90 million passengers flow through its terminals every year. It's a steel butterfly of glass and commerce, generating billions in revenue, connecting continents, and serving as the beating heart of a global aviation hub. And Dubai is planning to shut it down by 2032, not because it's failing, not because of some disaster, but because of something far more audacious, a plan that borders on science fiction. Dubai is walking away from success to build something even bigger. Why would a city demolish what's already working? Stay with me, because the answer reveals the ultimate power move in urban planning. <clears throat> Here's the issue. Dubai International Airport, known as DXB, is surrounded, completely boxed in by highways, high-rises and the dense fabric of a city that grew up around it. There's nowhere left to expand. Think about it. When you're handling 90 million passengers a year and the numbers keep climbing, you face a hard ceiling. The runways can't get longer. You can't add more terminals without demolishing neighborhoods. Flight paths thread through increasingly crowded airspace. Every square meter of available land carries premium pricing in this densely developed area. The noise alone creates serious constraints. WHO Europe guidelines recommend keeping aircraft noise below 45 decibels during the day and 40 decibels at night to protect community health. While these are aspirational guidelines that many airports worldwide struggle to meet, they represent the gold standard for community welfare. Meeting those targets when you're hemmed in by residential towers? Nearly impossible. Property values within noise-affected zones take a hit and community pushback becomes inevitable. And here's what makes it worse. While DXB is stuck, competitors aren't. Istanbul, Doha, Abu Dhabi, they're all expanding. In the aviation game, if you're not growing, you're losing ground. Dubai needed a solution. And fast. The traditional playbook says expand what you have. Add a runway here, extend a terminal there. But when you factor in land acquisition costs in urban areas, operational disruption, and the reality that you're building on top of a functioning airport, urban expansion becomes a logistical and financial black hole. So Dubai looked at the problem and asked a different question. What if we don't expand? What if we replace? Hold that thought, because the solution they came up with is genuinely insane. We're talking about building an airport so massive, it makes DXB look like a regional hub. But first, you need to understand just how big this thing is going to be. Meet Al Maktoum International Airport, or DWC, located within Dubai South. A 145 square kilometer development zone, purpose-built for aviation and logistics. The airport is already operational handling significant cargo operations and passenger flights, with passenger traffic jumping 36.4% year-on-year in the first half of 2025. But that's just the beginning. In April 2024, Dubai officially announced Phase 2 expansion with a 128 billion dirham investment. That's roughly 35 billion US dollars. Contracts have already been awarded. Construction has begun. This is happening. The master plan? Five full-length runways. Terminal capacity for 260 million passengers annually. That's not a typo. 260 million. That's nearly three times what DXB handles now. The scale is staggering. We're talking about an airport built on a greenfield site with optimal runway configuration from day one. No compromises no working around existing infrastructure, just pure engineered efficiency. The terminals will use facial recognition systems for seamless identity verification from check-in to boarding. Singapore's Changi Airport has already proven this technology works, reducing processing times from 25 seconds down to just 10 seconds per passenger. Scale that across millions of travelers and you're talking about massive efficiency gains. Biometric technology cutting processing times by 40 to 60% overall. Robotic baggage systems will handle over 15,000 bags per hour. 
a benchmark already achieved at Hong Kong International Airport. RFID tracking gives you real-time location data on every piece of luggage, computer vision tracking passenger flow, machine learning predicting bottlenecks before they form, and IoT sensors monitoring every corner of the terminal. And sustainability? Solar panels across parking structures and terminal roofs. The goal is 100% renewable energy, similar to Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport, which reduced its CO2 emissions by approximately 200,000 tonnes annually through its transition to renewable energy sources. We're talking about climate resilient design, accounting for temperature increases and extreme weather, rainwater harvesting systems, and infrastructure for sustainable aviation fuels. This isn't just an airport. It's an aviation city, the kind of mega hub that reshapes global route networks through the power of hub and spoke connectivity. Strategic hubs create exponential connectivity benefits, aggregating passenger demand to make thin routes viable and enabling airlines to operate larger, more efficient aircraft. Major hubs process 40 to 70% connecting passengers, compared to just 15% at point to point airports. When you have that kind of capacity, you're not just moving people, you're attracting foreign direct investment. You're facilitating international trade. Research shows major airports support around 12.8 million jobs, with $619 billion in annual payroll in the United States alone. In Europe, airports collectively contribute 675 billion euros to GDP. 4.1% of national economic output. The multiplier effects ripple through tourism, logistics, manufacturing and business services. The project itself is expected to support up to 1 million people through direct employment and housing development in the surrounding area. That's a city within a city, powered by aviation. So that's the new airport. Massive, smart and sustainable. But here's where it gets really interesting. What happens to the old one? Because Dubai isn't just building a new airport, they're reimagining an entire district. When DXB shuts down in 2032, Dubai will have approximately 29 square kilometers. That's about 2,900 hectares of prime real estate sitting in the middle of the city. For perspective, that's larger than Manhattan below Central Park. And they're calling it DXB City. This is urban alchemy. Decommissioned airport sites offer unique opportunities. You've got existing transportation infrastructure, roads, metro connections and utility networks already in place. You've got massive open spaces and you've got aviation heritage that can be preserved through adaptive reuse of terminals and hangars. The redevelopment playbook includes mixed-use zones balancing residential, commercial and recreational space, transit-oriented development maximizing accessibility, affordable housing integration using inclusionary zoning and public-private partnerships to create mixed-income communities, cultural and recreational precincts turning former runways into public parks. But there are challenges. Environmental remediation is serious business. Soil contamination from aviation fuel storage, groundwater monitoring and treatment, asbestos abatement in older buildings. You can't just bulldoze and build, you need comprehensive environmental assessment first. Still, case studies from other cities show it can be done. Former aviation sites transformed into innovation districts, high-density housing developments addressing urban shortages, and cultural precincts that maintain their aviation identity while serving new purposes. The economic potential is enormous. The GDP impact extends beyond direct construction. You've got indirect employment through supply chains, induced employment from workers spending in the local economy, and catalytic employment in tourism and business services enabled by the connectivity. Pulling this off requires precision. Transitioning from a capacity-limited facility to a new mega-hub while maintaining service continuity is like performing heart surgery on a marathon runner, mid-race. The phased approach typically looks like this. Two to three years of pre-transition, 
infrastructure completion, systems testing, staff training. Then six to 18 months of actual transition, running dual facilities for contingency. Finally, 12 to 24 months of post-transition optimization. Emirates has committed to moving all operations to Al Maktoum International. And here's the wild part. Executives have stated they can complete the entire transition in a maximum of three days. Three days to relocate one of the world's largest airline operations. That's the level of precision planning we're talking about. Fly Dubai, meanwhile, plans a phased transition giving the airport flexibility to scale up gradually while maintaining operational stability. You need redundant systems, comprehensive business continuity planning and emergency rollback procedures in case something goes wrong. Airlines need joint planning committees, phased route transitions and slot allocation frameworks ensuring fair access. It's a choreographed dance involving hundreds of stakeholders. Airlines, regulatory bodies, local communities and international partners. And the financing, multi-billion dollar projects like this employ sophisticated structures, public-private partnerships, green bonds attracting sustainability-focused investors, infrastructure bonds matching long-term cash flows and blended finance, combining public and private capital to reduce risk, performance-based contracts with service level agreements, Key performance indicators and innovation incentives keep everyone accountable. So here's the bottom line. Dubai looked at a massively successful airport, saw its limitations and decided to build the future instead of patching the present. With a 2032 deadline, construction already underway and $35 billion committed, this isn't speculation. It's happening. It's a gravitational shift, not just for Dubai, but for global aviation. When Al Maktoum International reaches full capacity, it will be the largest airport on Earth, handling more passengers than Atlanta, Beijing and Los Angeles combined. That's not just infrastructure. That's ambition at a scale that redefines what's possible. What do you think? Is this the smartest move in aviation history or the riskiest? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you've got stories about flying through DXB or any other mega hub, I want to hear them.